much for having me here today. I think I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. It's still concrete, but you'll see it's quite different first in the application and then in, I mean, in the shape, let's say. So I'm going to talk about CSP, which is energy and molten salt. We'll get to what these things are, probably you know, but I'll make a brief explanation of CSP, concentrated solar power, how it works, and why these kind of tanks uh, I'm about to talk are so important. So this is how a uh, concentrated solar power plant works when there is no storage. Um, in the upper side, you can see how we have a, a HTF, which is a heat transfer fluid that gets heated by the sun in the solar field, and then it goes to a heat exchanger where it heats uh, steam that will later generate uh, electricity. So the thing is that when it's cloudy or, or, or at night, we are not able to generate any electricity this way, right? So this is not quite a very reliable uh, way, of, way of creating energy. So no sunlight, no, no power, right? Then what we can do and what it's already been implemented is some um, concentrated solar power plant it's uh, storing this heat. Um, this heat can be stored different ways, but when we are doing thermal, I mean, uh, when we are generating electricity from the heat of the sun, we can store that heat using a different ki kind of heat transfer fluid. Instead of the regular transfer fluid that goes up to 400 degrees Celsius, we can use molten salt. Uh, this molten salt is, uh, usually made of potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate, which are uh, our salts. They are usually used to, um, uh, I mean, in the fields to, um, to make plants grow better. Uh, well, there is a word for that. But um, so the thing is that these salts are very corrosive. They melt at 280 degrees Celsius, so we have to keep them above this temperature if we don't want the plant to collapse. Also, these tanks that uh, are usually used nowadays, uh, there are two tanks, one for the hot salt, another one for the cold tank. Uh, we get uh, the, the salt flowing in one direction when we have sun, but when we don't have sun, we make it flow in the different direction. So it goes from the hot tank to the cold tank in the heat exchanger, it will heat the heat transfer fluid. So it will heat the, the, the steam and will still be able to generate current, I mean, to generate uh, electrical power. So what we can see here is that when <coughs> at nighttime, for some time, we are able to generate electricity. And when it's cloudy, we can generate electricity too, which is a way uh, reliable, a way more reliable <coughs> way of making electricity. Well, um, this, I mean, this setup doesn't work very well. It's not very uh, efficient anyways. So uh, right now we are working, uh, me and my company, I meant, with another 13 uh, partners in bringing this one step forward um, with this new concept of plant for new plants and for existing plants. In the upper side, we will see, I mean, we can see what it's uh, mean for new plants. We'll have a single tank instead of two tanks. And in this tank, we have a thermocline of uh, temperature where we have the whole salt in the, top, in the top and the cold sand in the bottom. So we only have one tank. Uh, we will store the dirty energy and we will use only this heat transfer fluid. We don't have another one. So we can go to upper, I mean, to upper temperatures increasing the efficiency of the plant up to 550 degrees Celsius. We see all, we only have also one heat exchanger, so it's more efficient. Um, for existing plants, what we propose is to increase the storing capacity, put a concrete module, which is right there, well, that will make, um, I mean, when the hot salt tank is empty or the cold sun tank is empty, will heat the, the energy in the concrete of the concrete model. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more how this concrete model works in the, in the following slide. 
So what, this is what we are working on with these uh, other partners. This is a 2020 project called New Soul. Uh, we are developing different kind of technologies. We are quite in a high TRL level and we are uh, about to make a demonstrator with our uh, <coughs> final stage development. So for the concrete model, we'll work in, the, in uh, ultra high thermal performance concrete that can uh, store the heat. So we don't only store the heat in the salt, we'll also store it in the, in the, in the concrete. Then the salt won't be regular and uh, potassium nitride and sodium nitride salt will go in something more uh, advanced than that, that can go in lower melting temperatures and higher operating uh, temperatures. Uh, also, since the molten salt, I mean, depending on the composition you use, if you start putting, uh, I mean, let's say in 50 years, you start putting uh, CSP plants where it's uh, efficient, let's say southern Spain, uh, southern Portugal, Italy, uh, Greece, that's in Europe, then you have the, less, the rest of the world, right? Then if you start putting this kind of storage, you'll end up uh, finishing the materials, the raw materials for the, for the uh, for the molten salt. So we need a filler material that will make, I mean, will work also as storage. Uh, and finally, that funny thing that w looks like an elevator, it's encapsulated phase changing materials that depending, I mean, that can uh, get energy when they solidify, I mean, <coughs> thermal energy, and will release energy, thermal energy, when they melt. So we will put them up and down depending on where the thermal plane is and we need, I mean, and if we need more energy or we need less. For the module, it's way more simple. We'll only have like these uh, pipelines embedded in concrete. In the pipelines, the, the, the molten salt will flow in one direction or in the other direction. If we want to put thermal energy inside the concrete, again, a high thermal performance con concrete, or if we, we want to get the, the thermal energy from, from the concrete, right? So also what we will do, since this is quite a uh, difficult um, technology to work with because the temperatures are so high, um, um, also if the molten salt leaks or if it solidifies, it can make the whole uh, plant to collapse. We are working in a, an embedded monitoring system to, uh, well, with, you, with two, two different objectives. In the first, in the first objective, inside the project, let's say, we want to assess the thermal performance of materials. I mean, we are developing new materials and we want to make sure they work, they work fine uh, in order to increase the energy efficiency of, of the system. Also, knowing where the thermal line is, for example, if it's one meter uh, lower or higher, it will make us, uh, make the system more, more, more efficient, right? And of course, we also want to know about the, um, the safety of the structure, if it's working fine, if we already have cracks, if it's about to collapse, and this kind of, of, of things, right? So this is a little bit uh, schematic of the, of the monitoring system that we're working at. Uh, we'll have uh, point sensors for temperature and strain in the different concrete layers. Here, there is a concrete layer missing, which will be the structural concrete, but uh, we'll have also monitoring in that one. Um, then, uh, inside the, the molten salt, we'll measure the temperature. We'll have the, the temperature profile along the tank, so we know where the thermocline is. And we also will measure some way or another the temperature inside the PCMs, the phase changing materials. We have to work hard on that, uh, so we know if they are solid or liquid, right? Uh, for the concrete module, it's quite more simple. We'll have temperature sensors and strain sensors. We won't get in contact with the cell. And of course, the inlet and outlet temperatures, so we know the, the flow of, of, of the temperature of the fluid. Uh, well, how are we going to do this? Well, what we need here is a, a well, we need a monitoring technology. That's what our partners have, have asked us because um, being a new technology and that has this, I mean, it's so corrosive and, and we work at so high temperatures, we need something to make sure that it's working fine. Also, since it's a new project, a new technology, we need to put a lot of sensors. They, I mean, we want to make sure that everything is working fine, 
So we need multiplexing and we need to work at high temperatures and with corrosion. So um, our solution for that has been fiber optic sensors and now we are going to start, I mean, well, I'll go to the, to the phase of the project, but we're going to start developing the actual sensors that will work fine in this, in this environment, which are not commercially available, unfortunately. So we'll work in molten sand temperature profile intact depths, concrete embed embedded temperature and strain sensors, and also we'll have to work in the network of, uh, of the sensors and the interrogator, because the interrogators um, commercially available nowadays uh, working in such a big range of temperature, which ranges from 200 and something to 550, uh, won't work fine with many sensors. We will be limited in that. And here you have a picture of our preliminary research where we were able to, to measure temperature uh, in the different ranges inside the molten salt. Uh, approach for implementing formal uh, value of information uh, analysis where this is, we are at a very early stage at the moment. Uh, I mean, this project started right this January. Um, so right now, I'll put it in the next slide, but we just uh, finished the framework to start the, the, the work in the project. We have to put 13 uh, partners uh, together in this, which was kind of hard. And we defined this uh, key performance indicator as a first step to focus later on the uh, value of information. Uh, the first two key performance indicators relate to the sensing technology only, which are the number of sensors that we can multiplex. We have to, well, what we want to go is 500 or more with the same network, which is kind of hard in, in this environment. And then we'll also evaluate the temperature and strain sensor reliability uh, by seeing how many survive after we make a demonstrator and it worked for three months. Uh, the demonstrator, I didn't talk much about that. It will be for the module and for the, for the thermal client tank for both in a, in a facility by the University of Evora where they have uh, uh, all the technology ne necessary to make the demonstrator in this, in this area. Um, and it will be well, a one six scale. It, was, it will still be like six meter high. It will, it will be quite, quite big demonstrator. And finally, uh, we will, uh, we want to, to, uh, to quantify the savings due to the monitoring systems. Uh, these are the preliminary key performance indicators. We want to see after three months, what are we able to measure? Uh, what are we able to detect? and what is the cost associated with, uh, with uh, uh, getting this information, right? But uh, we'll have, a, inside this project, we'll have a, let's say, um, we'll <coughs> update the key performance indicators during, during the project. So, I mean, there's still a lot to be done. Uh, finally, the current status, we are in June 2017. Uh, we have the framework to start the project I mean, we are not in June. The 1st of June, we'll have the framework. And uh, the thing is that <coughs> we still have many things to do because the, the, the demonstrator will be uh, done in 2019, September. We'll have to do many developments still. So open questions. Uh, well, first that it's not only about the structural performance, that is the value of information. We also have uh, energy efficiency to take into account which uh, it's also related to other areas where you work like as, as wind turbines, I guess. And I guess I'm out of time. So uh, that will be all. Thank you very much for your attention.
exactly. This <laughs> okay, is sorry. difficult to me. Oh, uh, sorry. But anyhow, uh, you mentioned the temperature and sensors reliability, strain sensors reliability is 90%. 80. 80%. We went, no, 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 sorry. I went 90 per 80% of the sensors to survive after three after months. After three months? Yes. And why, did, why they cannot survive? <laughs> Uh, the things that uh, the temperature ranges that we were working on and uh, it's, too high. it's very high. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's okay. yeah, and yeah. we are putting 500 yeah, sensors. Okay. So yeah, uh, one, one one last thing, and I think I have to put this about the acknowledgement. So. Yeah.